What up, what up, what up, what up, what up? We live, baby. We live on Instagram. You bore Hollywood. What's good? What's good? What's cracking? There you go. What's up, baby? How you doing, man? You know, chilling. Yeah. Get my mind. Let's have that conversation, life. baby. How you feeling? Killing it. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely killing it. Ugh. Yeah. So earlier we was talking about uh, um, pretty much living in the states or moving back to Germany, and you said uh, what's going on. In Europe right now, uh, Germany, Russia, and uh, Ukraine. Um, <clears throat> we have a uh, there and the dependency of energy. Because um, we turn up all of nuclear plants. When you turn up your nuclear plants, you're going to like power. So now you depend on Russia for what? Energy. So continue what you were saying we were talking about before. Uh, <laughs> this is just my own opinion, but uh, by yep. them by shutting down these nuclear power plants, there's a, a energy deficit. So where are they going to turn? Russia has been able to fill that gap, or at least sell that capability that they can fill that gap um, at a reasonable price. <laughs> um, with that everything with that country comes with strings attached. Just look at the history of the Ukraine back up, back at during Maidan, which was the Orange Revolution back in the, the mid 2000s. Um, the first thing they did was they started intermittently shutting off their power. And that was to inter, inter, sorry, influence the uh, government. Uh, that was also the time when they started uh, looking like they were really going to join NATO, which Russia has opposed for well, since, since the breakup of the Soviet Union. Um, right, right, right. The Ukraine continued down that path and Russia started t shutting off the power altogether. Uh, fast forward to 2014, 2015, uh, you had the Orange Revolution. They installed a, a government that was pro-Western, sorry, yeah, pro-Western. And... <laughs> that's when we started seeing the separatist movement start to get amplified. Uh, they were receiving uh, support from Russia. So essentially it was a proxy uh, war. I wouldn't necessarily call it a war, but at that time that was, that's when conflict went operational. Right, right, right. Um, I mean, based on, based on your, your experience in your field, um, how do you analyze how are we going to move forward from this dependency on what Russia provides well, and still cater to Ukraine's need and um, support from foreign, foreign influence? I think I can say with certainty that the U.S. doesn't have an appetite for another war. And um, so uh, it's as much as everybody wants at least – people that are pro NATO or support these security agreements. Um, this is something I think that the, there's going to be prioritizations. And I think the Ukraine will not end up on top in that regard. <coughs> okay. My opinion is they deserve to be part of the European union, European union and NATO more than Turkey does at this point, because Turkey, Turkey has been an agitator nation. Uh, they've been cozying up with, with uh, with other countries that oppose us uh, ideologically and politically, and, right? But what they're doing is, um, I I like Turkey. I think Turkey is a wonderful country. Oh yeah, I was there. Culture yeah, and history, but right, their government right, right. is really doing them a disservice, and it's just one person. That being said, um, 
the geopolitical position that they're taking is 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 not what NATO is about. I mean, they held your, Germany and Europe hostage back during the migration crisis by pulling the levers and opening and closing the the gates to Europe. Mm -hmm just to right. influence policy in Europe. Right. Um, they did I mean, it to undermine Merkel. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, at the same time, you know, we all see that. And if most people is not really involved in how political policies work, it's not like um, we have like a dinner and talk over dinner. There's a trade-off. There's always a trade-off right. where you don't cross that, what you call it, that red line they always talk about? Mm -hmm. Right. So once you cross that red line, and then you have other people saying, well, you're selling our, con our country short, right? But yet you say, no, um, we gave up some form of energy to gain some type of leverage. At the same time, with that leverage, we have to be careful what button you push. And if yeah. you push that button, then we have to go back to like, okay, we want to close all these nuclear plants because what? We want to the go green. Greens. <laughs> the green. Right? You want to go green. So yeah. it's like if you plant, if you get some seeds, you plant it, you fertilize it, give it water, right? It grows. But then if you give it too much, what happens? You drown it. Right. So there has to be a balance. So in hindsight, what you're talking about that that's what's going to happen. You're going to need a balance. And it's very difficult when you've got a stronghold and you got a nation that's um, pushing green, which is actually good because we all know... Except for speed on. limits. If they get their way, right. there's going to be a speed limit. Oh, yeah, I already know <laughs> that already. Um, <laughs> Those days are numbered. <laughs> no more speed on the Autobahn, baby. <laughs> I'll never get to test out that Tesla. <laughs> No more speed on the autobahn. <laughs> That's it. I'm staying here. <laughs> no, but no, oh, good man. I'm going to sell my BMW. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to get me an Opal. What? <laughs> 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 oh, dude. But, yeah, I mean, just to circle back like you, like you did, good job on that because I can go off on tangents. But uh, just yeah. energy, that's going to be a foothold and a sense eventually a wedge issue, I think, with, and Russia's going to exploit it. They've been looking right, right. for ways to exploit and fracture uh, social and political uh, boundaries within Germany and within the European Union and NATO. Uh, that's right. that's 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 just their mo, and it's right, right, it's right, not right. going away. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm gonna pull my other partner in right now from the from the states. He has a little bit of insight, and hopefully he's available. Yeah. There he is. I just sent him an invite, so hopefully I'll be able to. Yes, sir. Hey, what's up, brother? How you doing? Hey, brother, all is well. So yeah, that's my other brother from another mother as well. You're <laughs> in New York, and he's in, what, Arizona, right, baby? No, no. Col I, Colorado. Yeah, yeah, I'm in New York. He's in Arizona. And you're in Colorado. Yeah. yeah. So let's talk about it, baby. That conversation. Yes, yes, yes. How you doing? Um, I'm good, man. I'm, 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 I'm tapping a little bit. I don't know that much. You know, maybe I'm wrong. Correct me if I'm wrong. But uh, I truly believe this is my beliefs again. I believe that uh, 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 don't want you not at their doorstep. So, right. Fusion. <clears throat> I don't think into a full a war. I believe this is just a story kind of meeting a talks uh, to have some kind of agreement that the U.S. have come close to their doorsteps. So I think Ukraine po possibly will still join but some um, stipulation um, that will favor Russia. Now, correct me if I'm wrong. This is my belief with that. And you're absolutely right. I do not think the U.S. Right, uh, to 
another war too. Um, not even anybody. Uh, they have to assist. Part of they thing you already know that, but um, they they um far away from um, uh, any type of direct conflict. Um, so Russia has built. So I agree with everything with you. I just think, think it wants to get close to their borders because they just these countries trust. From so anything around close to they 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 homeland, they don't. Do you agree with that? Yes. Sir. I think we're gonna have multiple opinions here. I I don't think it's wrong. There, there, there's no wrong or right answer. I, I I I think on the premise of what you you were saying, I I I think I agree with it. I I don't think we're gonna see any shooting war. Um, something I wanted to add that you did bring up was that, uh, again, uh, how I was talking about how Russia wants to f create fractures within the alliances. Um, something like this is, it's there to stress those alliances. And uh, a perfect example is just what, uh, what Mr. Hollywood and I were talking about before we went live was... Uh, that like, for example, Germany, they are, uh, there's reports that they have obstructed weapons transport from England and the, uh, Estonia to the Ukraine. Um, I don't, I don't know all of the political nuances of that or why they would do it, but the, the initial like emotional response is what the F are they doing? Blah, 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 blah. And that's, that response is exactly what Russia wants to see among the populace because the populace is, I mean, obviously I'm not a German citizen, but I, I'm certain there's demographics within the German citizenry that, that had that same response. And uh, that's their objective is to create that social uh, fracturing within uh, the population. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Um, I mean, other people may have other opinions. I mean, I have friends that support um, the Russian uh, president. And we have dialogue all the time. Um, this is uh, do certain things to uh, suppress um, other nations. At the same time, you still have to try to understand, okay, why is Like that, feel that you support the person Russian. Like, remember the time when they had an issue in Georgia? Remember that? I don't know if it's my signal or yours, man. It's probably mine because I hated now. Both of you guys were cutting out. Yes. Yeah, yeah um, I, I'm good. Um, I have, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Now. Test, test. If you got something in the background, just turn it down. It's probably the background. It's on the background feed. No, I, I, I put my TV on mute. All right, carry on. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, I mean, I mean, what I do you feel? That last question. Oh, yeah, how do you feel about the the fact that there's other people out there still support um, like Russia and and what they're doing? Because you remember what happened in Georgia last year when they pretty much went in unannounced, like took over. Yeah, yeah, and uh, I mean, we had people there. There were individuals in home fields that were there when that went down. Right. And because uh, that was right in the middle of a Georgian exercise. That's why they, I mean, it, the timing was, I mean, not coincidental. Uh, right, right. I would have to take the position that uh, I think that people generally have an emotional response. And most of a, uh, when you say people support an individual or a country, oftentimes it's, uh, if, if they do have a, a let's just say, quote-unquote, ethnic re relation to it, because that's the term that Putin likes to use. But <laughs> even even so, I, it's, it's irrelevant. My, my point is that oftentimes those, those, I guess, the love of a country is, is oftentimes an emotional one. Right. And so I, I don't necessarily hold that against uh, an individual. That being said, I can walk away from that individual and be like, man, they got it crazy worldview there and, and people may say that about me and that's okay too you know 
But uh, initially, I guess the initial response for me is, yeah, somebody who still supports this, I'm just like, come on, man, look at the history. But, yeah. I mean, it's almost like we're trying to return back to what we didn't want. Oh, we're back in the 80s. It's, it's what it feels right. like. Right. Um, I think yeah. the stakes are higher because the world's a lot smaller, though, because of uh, the, the Internet. Right, right, right. Right. Because I remember when we had people, remember? Like, it was the it was the best thing in the world, you know? I remember going to the field without a cell phone. Mm. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> How did we survive, bro? <laughs> you know? How did yes. we survive? So, bro, you in New York City, you yes. in the state. Yes. How is it um, different from you? Because when I went to New York City, I felt... Like it was in New York, no more. The vibe wasn't there. The connection wasn't there. He was just like every time they someone looked at you, it was almost like you're a suspect for whatever they are thinking in their mind. There's so much things going on right now where people just in the airplane fighting. Like, what is wrong with people? Man? Well, well we, even us as Americans, we don't we trust each other sometimes. Uh -huh. I mean, I, I think things have changed as time went by, you know. I was, I was um, um, speaking about the times of the beepers and everything like that. So times have changed. So, I mean, we, we definitely um, put it in that perspective because times will change and people are going to change. Um, yeah, that New York is the New York, of course, that um, me and you grew up in. Um, but i tell you one thing, it's actually kind of going back to that. When it comes to, like, the crime yeah, and, and all the stuff on the trains and everything that um, I first came to this country in 86, mm -hmm. um, it was bad in the streets of New York. I mean, oh, very well. I, mean, Bruh, it, I know. Hey, listen, remember, when yeah. the street lights start flashing, you better be in the house. New York, New York was a... You better be in the house. Yeah, New York was an extreme... We, bro, we used to get commercials at 10 o'clock at night. Right. It is now 10 p.m. Do you know where your children are? That's right. <laughs> so so New York was an extremely... Very, very hard, very hard place to live in at that time. Right. Um, in the 90s, it was hard also, but turning into the 2000s, it started to change. And yeah. So, um. But certain selective boroughs, you know, Brooklyn cleaned up very much, you know. And, oh, uh, definitely. Brooklyn, definitely, because no one wanted to go to Brooklyn. So my thing is um, we had a nice little run with this cleanup thing, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I remember a couple of years back, and I'm not – I'm talking about when it was the clean New York. A yeah. Back when – um. You could have ride the train, and I'm talking about. I used to have, you know, that's when I used to wear my gold chains and everything like that. <laughs> I used to go partying, and I used to fall out in the train. Sleep. The links, we yeah. had the links, and you were safe. You were safe. Nobody yeah. touched nothing. You understand? Right. Because it was that clean. They cleaned up. Right, right, right. Crime went down dramatically. Everything was everything, you know, and I believe um, I, I'm not giving him no credit, but I believe when Giuliani came into office, you know, he hired so much cops. I mean, it backfired on him um, um, eventually, uh, but, you know, that's another story for another day. But, um, hello? Yes, okay, I'm here. Him, 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 him hiring all of these cops um, actually really cleaned um, the city. For, to, to a certain extent, you know? And uh, right. if we could have went out everywhere. You could go to any one of these real dangerous neighborhoods and you could have a good time and not worry about nothing. Um, in the last couple of years, after COVID, I assume COVID hit, after COVID 2020, um, New York has been going down to the pits and it's been getting worse and worse, you know? Um, ever right. Now, we're in 2022 now and we got at least two years of this. And it is 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 terrible. So what you see, what you saw, is like people just in fear. You know what I mean? Because you don't know what's going on. You walk in the street. You know, I mean, it's a lot of dysfunctional, mentally ill people walking around, and um, police have the 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 attitude like, oh well, so if y'all saying that 
we out here killing everybody. So we don't. I don't got nothing to do. You know what I'm saying? I'm. I'm just gonna sit around on my phone. You literally see cops just standing in the corner of, uh, on on the street and just on their phone texting or watching social media or something. So I mean, unless they what, have to work, you know what I'm trying to say? But, but I mean, at the same time, though, Trump. we had issues with them. Right. right. So it's like we had issues. We try to say, hey, you guys chill. But now <clears throat> you're taking that chill to like I ain't doing nothing. That's right. That's right. And that's the <laughs> That's the attitude. And that's the, the wrong attitude to have. Yeah, yeah. It's a wrong attitude to have because now everybody is running around here rampant. I mean. Bro, I remember when we was in the in the park playing ball, mm -hmm. the cops always came. They didn't harass us. What they did was, yo, give me that ball. And they'll play basketball with us. Now, hey. it's like, get on the wall, they're going to frisk you. And you're like, wow, we're just playing basketball as kids. It's bad. It's bad. It's bad. I mean, um, I lost my train of thought. What I was going to say there, but um, yeah, New York, New York, New York is some is a place that right now is is uncertain. Where we're going, you know, um, we have a new mayor. Um, he's looking like, oh man, what what did I sign up for? You know what I mean? Because a lot of things. Oh really? Watch already. But he was a former cop, wasn't he? Yeah, yeah, and I thought. That you know, he will come in here with a, you know, a heavy hammer when it comes to, like, cleaning up the streets. But uh, we still got to give time and see what's going on, you know? So um, I can't really do and on I, the yet, you know? I have to say, yeah, as, as an outsider, I mean, um, I'll keep this short. Uh, I went to New York last July, and they've done a good job at least of insulating the tourist area from it. Because I, I stayed at oh. Madison Square Gardens, mm -hmm. Penn Station. They're doing renovations there. I think the yeah. only, I like, side of the underbelly i guess that i saw while i was there was the uh outside across the street from penn station i want to say on the the east side either way um it, it was monday morning and i guess you know that's skid row over the weekend and monday morning was like right. the freaks waking up right. and you're right. walking down it was it was it, well, it was something i haven't seen before man it was like what they people do? strung out like standing up strung out bending over themselves like like they're tying their shoes i'm like wow well, well um, they're always going to use that method of shielding, um, you know, tourists and shielding certain people away from what's really going on. That that goes on, that goes on anyway. I'm sure in, mm. in Arizona they have areas like that. Okay, no, let, let's make this look so beautiful. We're going to show that, you know, let's, let's show this propaganda that Arizona is great. Or show this area of New York. Mm. So they're always going to do that. But mm -hmm. the, the the truth remain that. It is a dangerous place to be. Right, right. And to, I mean, and, and another. I think where I didn't see another piece of like reality was uh, I took the train from Penn Station all the way to Coney Island because I just wanted to see what it was like. And looking out over some of the the, the boroughs that we that we rode over, uh, I mean, some of them reminded me of Baghdad, with like yeah, yeah. people burning trash on the streets. <laughs> and it's funny you see that you see that in two thousand and twenty one. This is what I'm saying, right? Am I right or wrong? Yeah, that's crazy. That's crazy because New York was not like that about five, six, seven, maybe even a good ten years. You know what I mean? No, it wasn't. It wasn't. We felt safe. It's not. I mean, yeah. Mom Duke. Mom Dukes was overprotective, but we mm. was good. You know what I'm saying? Right. Mm. Uh, we had big brothers in the neighborhood where it's like you're coming from school, and big brother saw you doing something wrong. Guess what? Mom already knew before you got home. Yo. Mm. All your son, he out there at the pool, check him. Now you can't even talk to kids no more. Listen, no, man. You talk to my son. You can't. You, you remember that, that slogan? It takes a village to raise a child, right? Right. Where's man? Cancel that. Cancel that. Yeah. You can't say anything to people. Kids no more. Right. Everybody out for themselves right now. I, I think we're right we're under the 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 dark cloud of toxic freedom is what I call it. Yeah. Everyone has the right to do whatever they want. Mind your own business. Right. I don't agree with that, but that's just the sentiment that I see. Right. I mean, whether it's masks, you know, the whole COVID thing. I think. Oh, we're, I think, we're, I think we don't COVID, want to go too deep into that because we're going to have some trigger fingers <laughs> popping up. <laughs> okay. In the I'll, I'll, <laughs> I'll always say, and I live in Colorado, where like nobody gives a crap about that, and it was apparent when I went to LA. Hmm. Um, I consider myself. Hollywood knows me. He knows. He knows. Like 
generally how I lean. Um, so when I went to LA, I felt like an, I felt like a jerk because, you know, I had my mask on me and I walked into a store and I got all these looks and one of these people, I didn't, I wasn't wearing it. Um, and one of the uh, employees came up to me and said, you know, they looked at me. I was like, oh man, I'm sorry. I'm not really like this. It's just where I come from. Nobody gives a crap. <laughs> 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 And uh, I'm part of, you know, I, I, some of the effect I was like, I'm on your team. <laughs> you <know? laughs> but go down to Huntington Beach and it's just like Colorado, man. It's, it's crazy there. But you see, you see silly stickers. Yeah. Um, silly just, stickers. But but disparaging stuff. the president. I, I, I never understood that. Even with the former guy, I never did anything while he was in office. Not like that. But anyway. Well, this has been a, go ahead. No, I said New York here, man. They, they, they mandating everything, you know. I mean, I know they stopped it recently with this judge, but um, here in New York, you have to be get into spots. Um, the kids have to be vaccinated. I mean, if you want to go someplace now, they really have to check the kids. If the kid don't have a vaccine card, they're not getting in. I mean, it, it, it's just a different lifestyle here in New York when they come. Mm. To the COVID thing, you know, and then you go across the water, you sit at a bar, you know, in Jersey, but in New York, you can't sit at a bar and have a drink, you know what I mean? It's a no no, you know what I mean? So, um, it, it they definitely, New York, they definitely clamp on with this, this whole COVID thing. You know what I'm saying, do you think there's an ulterior motive there, or is it, it could be, is it a sincere effort to try to but, mitigate? Ask me these always going to direct this to um, these people that's, that's, that's um, generated for their pockets, you know what I'm saying, the greed, mm -hmm. um, you know, the thieves, you know, so, and yes, of course, it's a, it's a, it's a motive, and, and that's money, you know, that's what I believe, mm -hmm. straight like that. You know, you know what I see when I, saw, when I went to the stage, but, uh, and I've never seen this before, it's like every block I went to, it was either a gas station pharmacy like what's up with that man or oh, church we need that much medicine hey, <laughs> yo what's going on read something last night that uh mark cuban <laughs> mark cuban is, is 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 about to launch a online pharmacy pharmacy to uh and they're gonna sell the, these medicines and everything i mean think amazon's about it. doing it <laughs> bezos is doing it already <laughs> Yeah, I read that today. Uh, it's almost like a um, uh, universal health care where you pay a, a minimum or max, and then anything past that, the government would subsidize and pay the rent. I don't know how he's going to do it. I read the article. I think I shared Who I forgot what I shared it Who I shared it with? I shared it with someone. We were talking about health care. And I shared it with someone. And I was like, okay. Um, it's just another. It's just another money grab. The money grab. Yeah, it's a money play. It's a money grab. Yeah, that's what it is. The money play. Yeah. I mean, like, like I told people that my mom and aunts and cousins and neighbors, we was the original banking system. It was called a partnership, where everybody in the neighborhood pretty much had one person that they trust, right? That you pay fifty dollars every week to. As a partnership, so when that person needs it, you give that person the money to pay bills or whatever. But then you move yourself down in the bottom of the list, and you keep paying for that year. And then the next person pulls from that account. So that's like the original banking system. Now, uh, big pharmacy is monopolizing. Where, oh, let's keep promoting. You need this. You need that. You need this. You don't need all the medicine. You don't. Like pain medicine? Go back. Take a chill pill. You you be high. You get a little headache? Drink water. Take some vitamins. Get some more sleep. I have never seen so much pharmacy in one little city <laughs> in my life. Almost every block. Um, I take I take supplements. Are you staying in business <laughs> with so many different CVS? What what's the other <clears> one? CVS and Walgreens. You're like what? Yeah, that's uh, like a supermarket for food. <laughs> I, I believe they made a. I, I believe they did a world survey, and they believe that okay, everybody's becoming health conscious, 
all over the world and everything. And so they're like, you know what? Wait a minute. We got to curve this. We got to get our money. You know, so there you go. Maybe COVID or something or whatever. Start pushing these things out to get this money. You know what I mean? Because it's a big business. And they can't afford to to, to have any uh, any money scheme that they, you know? I, I mean, mean, like the more people, the more, the more you're sick, the more these companies. Yeah, yeah, the pharmaceutical um, companies. Yeah, 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 yeah. Simple as that. Okay, I got a question. All right, I'm, I'm going to switch it up. <clears throat> I was just uh, um, looking at one of my uh, mentors' uh, YouTube page, um, O'Shea Do Jackson. That guy is again. Mm. <laughs> right? And he was talking about how, um, how did he put it? Let me get my thoughts. How uh, where you hear one side of the story and it's it comes from like a source that you may trust, but then when you find out the story is not actually true, um, you either stick to the truth or you stick to the fact that you love that person. Like prime example, Megan Stein with with the story. When you first heard that, oh he shot me, shot me. Of course, all of us thinking like, what? 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 What are you doing? But then, then the plot twist, and you're like, wait, hold on. Um, he didn't shoot you. Now what? Mm. Remember, they was pushing this narrative that when certain people speak, you should believe them, right? But now, it's getting to a point where like, um, Sorry for switching topics. It's, it's more like now, do we believe them? Do we assume that they're telling the truth? Or we question their motive? Mm -hmm. Prime example. What's the source? Huh? What, what's the source you're discussing? Or is that you're saying the general narrative? Yeah, the general narrative. I think it depends what's, what, what sphere you're looking at. Um, I have my own bubble. You have your own bubble. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, every we all have our own perspectives. I mean, just look yep. at just, just looking at it at a social media perspective, everything I follow tailors generally what narrative I'm going to see, and yours is going to be different than mine. Mm -hmm. um, that being said, uh, the perspective I was seeing, I, I see with all of these cases is immediately after something like that happens, and I hope I'm not changing the subjects here, no. but um, immediately after a person is killed by the police mm -hmm. there, there, there there's immediately a search or a hunt in their past to find something to justify even though in my mind there is no justification i don't right. care how many convictions they had prior in that moment oh, in that time that cop right. has no idea what where that person's coming from or what their background is right. i don't care what they say and Right. Quite honestly, it's not relevant. Right. But they do it um, because it works. Well, here's an example. You had the guy, in, uh, I don't remember if it was Houston or Austin, but uh, you had the guy, the, the individual that was shot in his own house by a female police officer that walked into the wrong apartment building. Um, the guy oh, worked for an they... elite consulting company. Right. right. PwC is like Deloitte. They're, they're, they're an elite company. They don't hire <laughs> Thugs. <laughs> and still the first thing that came out was oh he had a he had a petty marijuana conviction or or they found marijuana in his room right right every time it's like they and, and and people i feel like they're literally jumping up and down when they find something to justify killing a person right and uh, there's anyway i hope i didn't take it too far off topic but as far as back to your narrative it, that's mm -hmm. that's a narrative i see Maybe not in that spe those specific. Well, it it's just that's that's one a part of that narrative that comes to mind when you ask that question. Well, I got a question. Been doing that, hey, hey, bro. Been doing that for years to paint the victim, um, like uh, like the victim is is a criminal or like to justify that yes, he was justifiable of getting killed or whatever the case might be. You understand what I'm saying? Well, this person was already doing this and doing that. So there you go. You understand what I'm saying? It's connecting, mm -hmm. connected with why he got shot or why she got shot. You know, so 
they all been trying to do that to try to paint the person in a bad light. This is this is a, a dirty tactic that they've been using for. Yeah, it, it dehumanizes the individual. Absolutely, right. absolutely. Uh, I mean, I got a question. I mean, do you think that um, with social media that will probably change and lean more to? Okay, we have video, right? Yeah. Uh, exactly what we saw, and then they now they're trying to spin it as, oh. We don't want to know. We want to know what led up to that, what caused it, rather than what you saw on video. So now they're spinning the narrative again from what you saw, yeah. the evidence, to, well, you didn't know what led up to that. No one wants to know context unless it supports their narrative. Mm -hmm. That's right. what it is. Mm. Yeah. And, but even <laughs> then, oftentimes the context doesn't matter because if you look at it in a vacuum, George Floyd was killed because he had a fake $20 bill. Bottom line. A fake $20 bill. You, any of us could have been like, here, here's a real $20 bill. Let's not kill this dude. Right. You know? And, 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 and that was their practice. How to deal right. with, uh, with, a, with a certain individual. That's just right. they, how they deal with certain individuals. You know, you think you, do you think question you think that when they look at a certain individual, they they have uh, instant bias on how to treat a certain individual. Because I remember when the mask thing came out in New York, and I saw that when they was in Upper Manhattan, all the people were sitting around had no mask. Yeah, I and remember. They, that. And, the, and the police was handing out masks to everybody else, and you like, okay, now you come to the hood and you beat people yeah. up in front of their house. <laughs> front of their house, yeah. They beat him up and then like throw a mask on him like a business card. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's disgusting. It's disgusting. Right. You know, it's disgusting. It's terrible. And um, it's I, like, but yet they try to tell us. They try to feed us this narrative that they wasn't following the rules. But if you're in front of your house, compared to in a public space, and you see people. In uniform, even people that okay, each police officer is an individual. Got it. But sometimes you're missing the common sense of police because you have two options: fear, or hey, let's give this person the benefit of the doubt. Mm. I don't think they're built that way anymore. You think so? You're talking about law enforcement? Yeah. They're yeah. not built that way anymore, especially if they're like veteran ones. And I know I'm generalizing here, right. uh, yeah, yeah. but they're just as cynical as I am. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's again, I'm generalizing. That's just my personal opinion. Right. I mean, we, we can take one incident and uh, make it broad, but then you can say, okay, no, show me different. So now, uh, was it last week? We saw, uh, a female cop being choked out by another cop. We're no, trying to stop him they from beating somebody her. up or causing more harm. Then good. Yeah, it's a lot yeah. of across the, the, the city. Oh, I mean, across the country now, you know? Um, right. So-called go, good cop now is suddenly springing out. Like, oh, no, don't do this. You should not be doing this. You know what I mean? So, right. I don't know. I mean, I don't know where it's going with that, but... um. It's a good thing, I guess. You know, yes. I mean, you know, yeah, they, you got to be held accountable. But I think it should be bigger than that. I think it should right. be um, going to the courts, meaning holding them accountable in the courts. You that, know? that was my yeah. – she needs to press charges. But because she's a cop, her career's over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. It happened to this one cop in New York City back in the 80s, I believe. Did you hear about it? And they fired her because there was one – what was it again? It was upstate, upstate New York. Mm -hmm. And they reinstated her, I think, two years ago. When Some, I'm not too familiar with the story. I heard it, though, but yes. Yeah. yeah. It was a sister girl, and right. they fired her for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they just reinstated her, even though it was back in the 80s. Mm -hmm. But they, I guess because of the new commissioner, he said, you know what, that was wrong. We're going to reinstate you pretty much. Um, she, she got a pen. Put it that way. Right, right. 
Yeah. How about um, when individuals sue like police? You think that uh, restitution should come from the the individual themselves that committed? Uh, two things. Two things. I think personal accountability should be there. Uh, Colorado took a step. I want to say uh, up to twenty five thousand dollars is personally that that individual is personally liable for. Okay. Um, and on the flip side, though, I don't think that any judgment should be enough for anyone to never have to work the rest of their lives again, unless they are the recipient of some life altering uh, damage that precludes them from working again. Mm -hmm. But generally speaking, I don't think it should be a payday for anyone. I don't. Mm. It should be more like legal fees, medical expenses, and lost wages. I'm, Would you say? I'm good with the multi-million dollar payout, but, but when you see these $50 million payouts, what are, because we as the taxpayers are, we're the one, what are we paying for? Right. So someone can live in the lap of luxury for the rest of their lives. And, and I, I, I don't think that's the intent. And I think it's being exploited. Abused. Yeah, exploited. Yeah. Right. Well, I mean, now, now we got um, on the wire that well, even when you get a lawyer, the lawyers are is not giving you a fair check. Even if you don't want to earn. Sometimes it's all about how much money you can make. Because me as a if I was a lawyer <clears throat> and you committed a crime, <coughs> I, I can't defend you. Sorry. It's not just a job. You commit a crime, I know you commit a crime. My job is not to try to get you out. Mm. A defense lawyer should be a defense lawyer for innocent. Not for if you did it, but let me try to get you off. So it's kind of hard, okay. though. I, th I think if, if, if you're a public defender, though, mm. you're kind of in a spot because that's, that's your mandate is to defend everyone vigorously, right. regardless of what you th if, how, no matter how guilty you think they are. The work before you. Not think evidence. Or no, because they're going to have their own discovery because they have, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, you, and you're working within a certain. Um, what's the word I'm trying to use? That um, you work in a certain box when it comes to being a um, public defender, right? You you have mm -hmm. certain certain things that you you can't go like okay, let me go to California, go research why you know this person left New York or whatever whatever the case whatever that case is. You know, you understand? Right. What I'm work to us because I've been around them, and um, so I know they 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 like robots, right? <laughs> you know, there's certain words they say, certain things they do. I see them defend these these kids, these juvenile kids that I work with, and um, it, it's just a routine thing. You know what I mean? Like Jag, take the plea deal, right? Right, <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> and um, but then again, is some of them work privately too, also, and then they work totally different. Cause um, I, I know one that he worked. He's a public defender, but um, you could hire him privately, and he's actually a very good um, lawyer. You know what I mean? So right. that's when he really exercised his skills and his his um his ability to defend a person. Yeah, they're, you think they're, they got scam nice. lawyers out there? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You think they got scam lawyers out there that oh. you know they'll try to milk you, oh. knowing that um, of course. You know what I'm saying? String you along. Yeah. Right. 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 To keep you on, you know, they know they can't help you, but they're still they're they're still entertaining you. You know what I'm saying? Those are called divorce lawyers for men. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that's another topic. <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> wow, that's a, that's a <laughs> that was a good one. Hey, I like how you do that in there. Are you? <laughs> hey, listen, fellas, man, I, I gotta run, but um, All right. you're in Arizona, right? Colorado, yeah, we'll Colorado. definitely have to do this again, man. It's good chatting with you. Yeah, for sure, yeah. for sure, for sure. I have a I have a friend of mine somewhere in Arizona out there. I meant to go. He keep telling me to go down there, go visit. I yeah. never Arizona. I would love to. He said you will love it if I come down there. You know, so I want to check it out to visit. I mean, they're, a little, they're a little crazy. What you there, love yeah. about it? There's mountains. Uh... 
Hey, he got a house, you know, he's set up nicely down there. I was like, let me go check him out. Yeah, it's affordable. It's affordable in Arizona. If you can if you can handle the heat. I, I can deal with the heat. I'm fine. I'm tired of this cold. It's cold up here now. I'm done. If you're if you're a homebody, you'll be fine there, you know. Right. Yeah. I, I have another a good photographer friend of mine too out there in Colorado. He he's somewhere in that area too. He's a good yeah. he's a brother, nice upstanding brother, man. You know, so, yeah, so you're still doing you're still doing photos, right? Yes, I am. Yes, I am. Yes, I am. Hey, yeah, hey, you did a good job doing the protest, man. You did a good job in New York City. Those them photos, are, it should have been on a Time magazine. I was like, this yeah, dude, was, um, no, nah, I actually got um one or two um um uh, images in the um um African History Museum in D.C. Yeah, wow. So, um, they it's just during the COVID, they couldn't have a whole reception and everything, so they're still working. Mm -hmm. So hopefully um, that comes into reality. And uh, y'all always welcome. Absolutely. Yeah. Right? Uh, I'll Yo. Make sure, I'll make sure to add you. Indeed. indeed. Yeah. Please do. I'll hey, we'll do it again, man. This is the conversation. We're going to keep it real. All right. All right. Appreciate All right. you, brothers, to getting online with me for my first podcast. Appreciate it. Let's do this. All right. All right. Later. <laughs> Talk to you later. All right, All right. brother. Be safe. Be good. Life Thank is you. good. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining my podcast, my first podcast. Um, I'm going to talk about different topics. Right now, we're just going a little, a little bit political and things that most people don't want to talk about, but we talk about it every day, so I'm going to keep it real. Um, so next conversation we're going to have tomorrow, see you tomorrow. Uh, I'm going to be posting the timeline when my next conversation. We're going to talk about relationships, um, why there's a decrease in the happy homes. <laughs> And all those good things. So appreciate all that for watch for watching. Life is good. I'll see you on the next past podcast. And I'm signing out. Later. Let's go. All right, love y'all. Peace. Life is good, baby. And I'm out.